I'm Sarah Bach. I'm the Director of Community and Neighborhood Development here at the Pueblo West Metro District. And I have Bill Vickers joining me. He is the President of the Committee of Architecture and Dion uh, joining me, the Land Use Inspector here at Pueblo West Metro. So today we're talking about chicken, pig, goats, oh my, backyard animals in Pueblo West. So let's dig into some questions that we've heard from you all on Facebook and social media. We're going to try to uh, answer your questions and get some more clarification on what is and what is not allowed in your backyard. So first we're going to start with Bill. Bill, tell us a little bit about the Committee of Architecture and also the Declaration of Reservations. Okay, the Committee of Architecture was formed in 1969 when McCulloch Properties was incorporating uh, Pueblo West uh, for the sale of the lots. Um, the Committee of Architecture enforces what is known as the Declaration of Reservations, which is basically a document that describes land use uh, for lots and tracts in Pueblo West. Um, also, the Committee of Architecture is an independent body that is appointed by the Pueblo West Board of Directors, but they are not the same individuals. Uh, they are a separate entity from the Board of Directors. And so basically the reservations just tell you how you can use your property, what you can do with your property, um, and so forth. Great, thank you. I appreciate that. And where can people pick up a copy or see um, information about the Declaration of Reservations if they haven't? Uh, I, believe, I believe that uh, you can you can find them online at the Pueblo West website, or you can stop by the uh, Pueblo West offices and get a, a copy of the declarations. Although now during the, uh, the COVID virus, I'm not sure that uh, you can stop by and pick them up, but you can certainly look at them online. Yes, yeah, correct. Our front office is closed, but you can definitely find them online. Thank you for that. So what page uh, for people that do have a copy of those, would you find information on animals um, in general in the declaration? Well, on, uh, first off on page four, it uh, talks about, um, let me get to it here real quick. It just says that uh, any and all animals were permitted under any use herein shall be confined to the rear of the lot. Uh, then you can go to page six, which has additional um, information for our R1 properties, which are residential, our R properties, which are residential properties, R1, uh, three, five, um, that has additional information on, on animals. And then you'll find that the uh, later pages, such as page 18, dealing with agricultural three property, it gets specific as to how many, you know, what type of animal. Um, it, it speaks of horses. Um, and then also you can have um, animals that pertain to youth programs on a uh, requested basis. You need to you need to come to the um, Committee of Architecture and tell us that you are, have a youth program, that your children are involved in a youth program, and you can have uh, some different types of animals um, in that uh, regard. And Dion would, would have that uh, more specifically. She, she deals with that on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay. Yeah, let's let's dig into that a little bit. So, are chickens allowed? Are roosters allowed? Talk about chickens and roosters, Dion. Chickens are allowed on an A3 um, acreage, up to 12 laying hens. Absolutely no roosters, um, mainly mainly because of the noise that they create. Um, R1s, no chickens, no fowl, any type of that is allowed in any R1s. So yes, you can have chickens up to 12, no roosters on an A3. Okay, so that's why some neighbors say, well, I can have chickens, but I drive down there and, and they can't. Um, so it seems like depending on what residential zone you're in depends on what you're allowed to have. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah. Okay. And if I could add, add something, Sarah, um, I would believe too that uh, Pueblo West has some A1 and A2 properties, if I'm not mistaken. Dion, I, uh, I would assume that the chickens would also be allowed on those properties. Correct. You are correct. Yes. And uh, we have like the A, A1s and A2s, which is up by off of Laramie, I believe, which is that special area up there where they have over five acres of uh, property. So yes, yes. That includes that and as that well. And that A you're talking about refers to agriculture zone. 
agricultural acreage, yes. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. So what about pigs, goats, pigeons, the other animals that people request? Are those allowed? On an A3 or as Bill stated, an A1 or an A2, um, you can have one, one horse per quarter acre. So if you have one acre, you can have up to four horses. Again, up to 12 chickens, no roosters because of the nuisance. Goats are allowed, however, the property owner needs to present Committee of Architecture or me being the land use inspector, some type of proof that they have a child or children that are in a uh, youth program and they need to keep that up to date with us once a year, such as like 4-H or something to that effect. Pigs, no pigs, no pigs are allowed. No turkeys, no pheasants, no, I mean, pheasants are natural, but um, no turkeys, um, absolutely, like I said, no pigs. So yeah, some goats are allowed, but you have to present us with uh, youth program papers. Okay, so if, so if a teenager wants to do a goat yoga class, that's not a good enough reason to have goats. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> Darn he or she has to be in a 4-H program or a youth program. Okay. Okay. Thank you. What other animals do you get questions about besides the ones that you mentioned? Any other animals? Um, we've been asked um, a couple of times about racing pigeons. Mm -hmm. And depending, again, on where you live, if you are on an A3, at that point, if you were wanting the racing pigeons, you would need to file for a variance. Basically, at that point, we would send out letters to your neighbors or to that person's neighbors within a certain square footage, letting them know that this person is wanting the racing pigeons, and then we would take it from there. Okay, then the, then the Committee of Architecture would have to vote on whether or not they would accept that variance? Correct. Okay. So Bill and Dion, um, but let's start with Bill. Walk us through, if I see that my neighbor has a rooster and we've heard that roosters aren't allowed anywhere in any residential zone or agriculture zone, but I see some or I hear roosters, what do I do about that? Who would I call or what process would I go through to let the district know that someone's violating those declarations of reservation? Um, well, first of all, I would, uh, if it was me, I would go to my neighbor and, and you know, just say, hey, your, your rooster's keeping me up. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and, and then, you know, politely, uh, you know, tell them about the declarations of reservations. And uh, beyond that scope, though, they would need to uh, call the, uh, well, you can do it online. I think you can go online and, uh, and do it or call the uh, district offices, committee offices and, and report a violation. And then I believe at that point, uh, an inspector goes out and, and looks and verifies that that is the case. And then, you know, appropriate action at that point is taken. Dion would know more of the, the steps that they take to uh, rectify that problem, but you can certainly uh, let someone know that it's being violated. Dion, do you want to add anything to that? No, um, just the fact, you know, that, yeah, they're, they're more than welcome to contact me either through our website or directly through me. Um, and yeah, the first, the first step I take is, is to go out to, to the site of the violation and see for myself that there actually is an issue. And um, then I, I take it from there and a violation notice would be sent out. Okay. And the, the person that's um, violating that has a chance to rectify it. They have, how many days? Um, usually, if it's something minor like a rooster or something like that, I usually I give them a couple of weeks to uh, bring the property into compliance or get rid of the rooster. Um, if it has not been taken care of within the time frame that I allow, then the next step is sending a hearing notice. So, okay. and that hearing notice basically allows them to come before the Committee of Architecture and state their case on why they have a rooster or why they want to keep it. Okay, so there is a process and kind of a waiting period to allow people to come into compliance. Um, so even though I'm the one that maybe complained, I may not see the problem um, 
totally complete for, for a couple of weeks because we're allowing people some time to take care of it. Is that correct? Correct. And usually when I talk to the complainant, I let them know that we do have a process that is not going to happen overnight. And they're okay. usually okay with that. Good. Perfect. But I really like what Bill said. Sometimes just talk to your neighbor, find out what's going on. Maybe, maybe it's, well, a rooster, you're going to know if it's a rooster, but it's good to still talk to your neighbor, let them know, did you know that I, you know, I can call the district, this isn't allowed, can you just get rid of it? Because it's, sometimes it's okay to solve problems um, together as neighbors before calling the district, but I'm glad we have a really good process. Thank you for explaining that. So one thing that we also, oh, go ahead, Bill. Yes, sir. One thing I would add is that the, the Committee of Architecture does and can make uh, you know, variations, uh, exceptions, I guess you could call them. Um, they have the authority under the declarations to do that. So you know, if there's extenuating circumstances or there's you know, uh, potentially a, a good reason that something has to happen or occur, you know, the, the committee is really, I think, uh, there to try to, to solve uh, issues and not necessarily uh, at least in my opinion, to be just a hammer and a, you know, uh, an iron fist as to what should happen and, and should not happen. So uh, I think we're really flexible. I think we try to work with the community and we try to do what's best uh, for all involved because, you know, things that we do do on our properties do affect other people. And I think it's just mm -hmm. important that we as, as neighbors, good neighbors, just be cognizant of that. But, but know that the committee can and will uh, make exceptions, uh, you know, if it's if it's deemed viable great thank you appreciate it so one other thing that we've um, heard from the community um, <laughs> we've seen some petitions going around trying to get chickens um, or other animals but i think particularly chickens to be allowed in all residential areas so is that the right way to go is a petition or do you have to have majority vote? Is it per tract or what? Can you explain some of that, Bill? Sure. Uh, the declarations do allow for a process of change. Um, uh, they were initially adopted for a period of 25 years and after that they were automatically extended for 10 years and, and changes can be made um, every 10 years as long as you have uh, the majority of landowners um, that agree to that, um, change that particular tract. Um, so it's a, it's a lengthy process. Uh, if you, and I believe that we've gone through this before, if you want to change them immediately, uh, you have to have 100% of the tract of the lot owners to uh, agree to the changes. Um, so it, it's, it's quite a process. It's a, it's a lengthy process. It's uh, cumbersome. Um, I think your best bet is to come to the committee and, uh, you know, Lead your case and and try to you know we'll try to work with you from that standpoint but yeah they can be changed but it's a it's a lengthy process okay and we probably have to get our legal counsel involved to to really coach us on what that process looks like especially yes. if the committee and the homeowners um and from my understanding dion how many tracks are there <laughs> oh my gosh i Several. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. I'm sorry, right off the top of my head, I don't know. It's okay. Many. There's a lot. So the point is to change a covenant like this across the entire district, it would be a process that would happen per tract. And so that That's would great. be a lot of homeowners, a lot of organizing around um, a particular issue, but it can still be done. Um, and we'll talk on another episode a little bit more about the legalities and the process of how to how to amend covenants and, and what that looks like. Uh, well, um, one thing I might add, sir, is that um, it just it just escaped me <laughs> what I was going to add. Uh, I'll think of it. Go on. I'll I'll, I'll get. My okay. No, nope, I think we're going to wrap up here pretty soon. So um, one thing. So if you don't know. Um, what residential air zone or um, area you are in, whether you're in county or Pueblo West, uh, whether you have um, to abide by the Declaration of Reservations or not, because if you're in a 90% built out tract, then those covenants are no longer enforceable by our Committee of Architecture. Yeah, that's so what if I'm you're not sure, 
Yeah, do you wanna explain what that means, Bill? Yeah, uh, the, the declaration uh, also provides for uh, when a tract is 90% built out or improved upon, that the committee no longer has enforcement capabilities. The, the covenants or the declarations are still in place. They run with the land. They, they are incorporated in the deed of your property, so they don't go away. But the only way that they're enforceable is uh, through civil action between neighbors. So you can force your neighbor to adhere to a covenant, but you have to take them to court to do it. Um, which, you know, it, it's basically the same process that we have, but uh, you don't have us acting as your um, adversary or your uh, ambassador, I guess. So. Yeah, thank you for that. That's, that's important to, to, um, to think about. So if you don't know, if you're in a 90% build out tract, or if you don't know what residential zone you're in and what's allowed in that area, you can call our office um, or visit the website to get phone numbers um to our staff that can help guide you through that again looking at those declarations will be really helpful to you and your neighbors to understand what you're allowed and not allowed to have so i think that's all we're going to talk about today but i want to um, throw it back to dion or bill if you have any final um comments that you want to make about anything we talked about today anything I you forgot to say i think i'm good thank you um the only thing, the only thing that I would uh, reiterate is that the committee is here to to help the community. We're here to, you know, try to make things run smoothly for you and your, and and allow you to use your property to the fullest uh, capabilities. So, you know, don't be afraid to uh, work, work with us or contact us. Uh, we'd be happy to uh, do whatever we can to help out. Great, thank you. And that's PuebloWestMetro.com. My direct number is 719-547-5019, and I can help direct you to Dion or Bill or any of our staff that's here to help you. So until next time, stay safe and healthy out there. Bye. Thank you. Bye.